I discovered Spider-Man when I was between 6 and 9 years old during the late 1990s. I never read any of the comics, as I preferred Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck to superhero comics, so I was first introduced to the character through the Norwegian dub of the Fox Kids cartoon. All my friends at the time loved that show, to the point that instead of playing cops and robbers on the playground, we'd play as Spider-Man and his villains. Spider-Man has some of the best villains in the superhero genre, with only Batman villains coming close, so they were a huge reason for why I loved the series. I liked to play as Shocker, due to his cool costume and abilities to shoot shockwaves out of his hands. I also seem to remember my local toy store selling Spider-Man web-slingers, which shot out what was probably silly string, but I never knew anyone who owned them. I think I tried them out at the store once, but they understandably stopped letting people do that after a while. Later, I fell in love with Sam Raimi's first two Spider-Man films from 2002 and 2004. Raimi did a great job translating the cartoony world of Spider-Man into a live-action blockbuster series, and is partly to thank for the superhero movie boom that we got later, beginning with Iron Man in 2008. But when I saw Spider-Man 3 in 2007, I was afraid that I had finally grown out of the series, so I was very happy when I later learned that that film is universally panned. I wonder how many people have thought that I have grown out of something they loved, simply because they saw a bad iteration of it. The Amazing Spider-Man film from 2012 and its 2014 sequel did a lot to make me forgive Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 may have been the worst of the Raimi films, but it was still a film about Spider-Man, not a Sony marketing campaign about some cool dude dressed up as Spidey on a lark. So after three subpar Spider-Man movies in a row, it felt amazing to see Peter Parker show up in Captain America Civil War in 2016, fighting with Iron Man and the other Avengers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then Spider-Man Homecoming took that ball and ran with it the next year. Homecoming really focused down on the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man aspect of the character, scaling the action down instead of supersizing it like many superhero movies do. That's something I really loved about the film, securing it as one of my all-time favorite Spider-Man movies. In 2018, Spider-Man played a pivotal role in Avengers Infinity War, and had a minor but fun part in the sequel Endgame in 2019. Another really cool Spider-Man related medium to come out in 2018 was Marvel's Spider-Man game for the PlayStation 4, developed by Insomniac Games. At the risk of going completely IGN on you, this game really makes you feel like Spider-Man as you swing from building to building across New York. The city is so well recreated that I recognized several places from the time I visited New York in 2014, to the point that I sometimes navigated the game from memory of where things were in real life, even if there are some fictional buildings, like the Avengers Tower peppered in there as well. 2018 really was the year of the Spidey, with Sony also releasing the great Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse animated film in December of that year. In my opinion, it is not only one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made, but it may even be one of the best animated movies ever made. So it is really a shame that a lot of Spider-Man fans skipped out on the movie ticket because the film was not live action, and a lot of animation fans skipped out on it for starring Spider-People. In Spider-Man Homecoming, one of the best parts of the movie was when Peter Parker's class went on a school trip to Washington DC, where Peter naturally had to don his red and blue spandex once again, for a crime-fighting swing across the US Capitol. The sequel, Spider-Man Far From Home from 2019, built on this concept by taking Peter Parker's class on a scientific school trip around Europe. So this time we got to see Spider-Man in Venice, the Swiss Alps, Prague, Berlin, the Netherlands and London and it was fun to see him out of his element, interacting with other things than the New York skyscrapers we have seen him swinging from for decades. This is what I want from the sequel to the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game. Spider-Man Miles Morales from 2020 is more like a standalone expansion than a real sequel. It remixes the original game in a lot of fun ways, having a completely new story, being set around Christmas instead of in the fall, so all the streets are snowy and there are Christmas decorations all over the city, and it also has some other abilities for Miles' Spider-Man than Peter's. But the map is mostly the same except for the cosmetics, the combat is mostly the same except for the new abilities, and it generally just feels like more of the first game as opposed to a full sequel to it but the first game was very fun. So don't get me wrong, I'm glad we got more of it. But for the proper sequel to the game, Spider-Man 2. I hope they take some inspiration from Spider-Man Far From Home. Have Spider-Man travel the world on some kind of mission, so that he can swing around in some exotic new locations. 
The different locations could be both linear levels and sandboxes of different sizes. A lot like how I understand the journey in Metro Exodus was handled, and how I know the outer worlds worked. In that game, you travel from planet to planet, most of which are smaller sandbox maps, with a few being fairly large, Monarch being the largest. Due to how quickly you traverse the map... Oh, oh, uh, wait. There we go. Due to how quickly you traverse the map in Spider-Man, I'd like the maps to be much larger than they are in the outer worlds. But I think that globetrotting is something that could make for an interesting experience in a Spider-Man game. But I would also be interested in seeing the other boroughs of New York, not just Manhattan like in the first game. So that might be another direction that I could take the sequel in. You may be thinking that Spider-Man's powers really requires the tall buildings of Manhattan to work, at least in a video game. That moving Spider-Man to Brooklyn or some small town in Europe would not make for a fun game experience. But I think Insomniac Games made the movements so fun that traversing more normal sized buildings or even trees in Central Park is almost as fun as swinging from the skyscrapers. And with Miles Morales they have now introduced a new movement mechanic that lets you gain air regardless of the buildings around you. So maybe it should be him going on the missions around the world, with Peter Parker staying in New York, letting you switch back and forth between them for different missions. The first game was the perfect version of a Spider-Man Swings Through New York game. So beyond continuing the fantastic story, I don't see a good enough reason to have another game set entirely in Manhattan. And after seeing Spider-Man Far From Home, I might be disappointed with anything less than a Spider-Man road trip game. But I trust the creators, so we'll see. But before we get to see that, Marvel is set to release Spider-Man No Way Home in theaters December 17, 2021, which is rumored to have taken inspiration from Into the Spider-Verse, in that it features several different Spider-People from different dimensions, possibly with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield reprising the role with current Spider-Man Tom Holland. I'm hoping that the movie will be good and that they aren't stretching everything a little bit too much. But with the previous Marvel Studios Spider-Man films being so good, they haven't really given me a reason to doubt them. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Either way, the past few years have been a great time to be a Spider-Man fan. I lost my interest for a few years beginning in the early to mid 2000s, possibly coinciding with my teens, or me just focusing on other properties. But Marvel's efforts with the character, starting with Civil War in 2016, reignited my love for him. I don't know what it is about Spider-Man that makes me like him so much. I have a fear of heights and I don't care much for speed either, yet I often imagine myself as Spider-Man swinging from building to building. That is something I fantasize about far more often than I do flying, which I imagine is the more common power fantasy. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments what superhero power you not necessarily would choose, but the one you find yourself thinking about the most. And if you want to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.